Thanks for tuning in to your day off podcast, hosted by your boys, Corey and Tony. I think by the end of today, I might have another best friend. They're committed to making you fall in love with the hair industry, one podcast at a time. Uh, you're going to grab a lot of information. Yeah, you're going to learn a lot. Presented by Hair Industry. Ladies and gentlemen, this is it. Your day off podcast will begin after a word from our sponsors. Corey, and of course, I'm sitting with my best friend Tony. What's up, buddy? What's going on, brother? Nothing, man. Seems like we haven't done this in a minute. Um, but yeah, here we are. Oh man, it, it does seem like a minute, dude. So, uh, this is gonna be like the first week of April, but uh, next week is uh, is our big event, Pressy Poe and Friends. I am I, I, I'm beyond ecstatic. It's our fourth year doing Pressy Poe and Friends, and every year it seems to get bigger and bigger and bigger, and not bigger in like as far as people, but as far as like uh, just the excitement and stuff. Oh yeah, the education, the networking, the just the value of of the weekend is going to be incredible. Yeah, and if you're listening to this, unfortunately, the tickets are the most expensive they're ever going to be. You should have bought them a month ago, but, you know, know that for next year. But this is definitely, if you're in the DMV area, if you can get in, if you can take the day off of work um, on, on the 13th, so April 13th, you definitely want to be here. Um, you know, get your get your tickets. You can get them on Eventbrite um, if you look up Pressy Poe and Friends. And also, um, all the artists are doing classes on Sunday the 14th. So, again, if you can get here, it's just like, it, it's unbelievable. Um, just a really super quick rundown uh los cuts it is going to be here teaching classes uh omg artistry is going to be teaching classes jamie wiley is going to be teaching classes the incredible ira uh, pope sage is going to be teaching classes hair by rima is going to is going to uh, introduce you to her uh caddo cuts and then of course our our, our friend presley poe is going to be doing a couple classes as well so definitely make sure that you check those out and uh and if your fomo is high it should be because it's, it's an incredible incredible weekend um it's an event like no other uh, no other event. Yeah. And, and, and what the great thing about Saturday night is that after the show, you get to, you get to really rub elbows and hang out and talk to these people, um, and, and network with everybody that that's there. That's like-minded. That's right. I mean, you know, what, 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 how the, again, one of the reasons why this is different, if you go to a big hair show, you know, the, 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 the artists on stage, they usually disappear backstage Well, they're going to disappear front stage. So they're just going to be hanging out, you know? And, and, and the cool thing for us that we get to kind of see is like, watch like people who are like, we'll use Presley as the example, people that are like fanning Presley just realize that Presley's a real person and just a person sitting in the room with her and just another hairdresser, you know, and that's it to, to kind of watch that switch is, is very cool for us as well. Yeah. Okay. Cool swag, got um, you know, uh cocktails, oh, uh some cocktail. order. So it's just really a, a chilled evening that's packed with education and back and you know, by the end of it, it's packed with friendship. Packed exactly. Uh come with imposter syndrome, leave with purpose, I think was the motto this year. So um, yeah, we can't do this without thanking uh Babelis. Babelis is our title sponsor this year. Um, they've done an incredible job helping us promote it, helping helping us bring in artists and all that. So big, big thanks to uh to Babelis and Babelis Pro. Um, but uh, but yeah, so we can't wait to see you guys. Listen again, April 13th. Come and check us out. Listen, today on today's podcast, our friend Misty reached out and she's like, You've got to have this person on your podcast. And the truth is, is Misty's never like reached out and said, you've got to have this. I'm, I think I just got Misty in trouble, but she's never, she's never done that. So, you know, um, um, uh, when Misty, uh, when Misty said that we need to have this person on, I, I immediately, my ears perked up because again, she's never kind of said so. Yeah. And the funny thing is, is like pre-talk, we were just talking and every conversation we start, we're like, oh, ho, oh, oh, we're gonna have that on the conversation. Oh, 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 we're gonna have that on the on the podcast. So it's pretty funny. So we really didn't get a chance to get dig deep in in the pre talk because everything that we started to talk about, we want to bring one to the podcast. So yeah, well, yeah, she's she's just this <laughs> fascinatingly interesting woman, and um, and and there, like, there was a, like a lot, a lot of little cool twists and turns in in the pre talk, which is like, yeah, you know, yeah, and for people to know, like. 
if I start asking questions in the pre-talk, um, I, I have to stop them because I'll, I won't ask them during the thing, but, um, I'm just, I'm, I'm honestly intrigued by, by, by our today's guest. Should we get in? Yes. Let's get it. So today our guest is Meg Long. Oh, you got it right. Ah, oh, yeah. <laughs> I hope I don't mess up Meg Long. Um, uh, uh, today our guest is Meg Long. Uh, Meg Long is kind of, uh, billed as a neurodivergent hairstylist. Um, I'm interested in what this conversation is. I'm interested in and 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 what well i i just i kind of want to get into it i don't want to put anything in her in her brain so should we just get in let's do it miss meg long welcome to your day off man hi thanks for having me yeah uh, yeah thanks for coming on like like Corey said earlier we're truly intrigued by you we uh we're intrigued by the pre-talk so there's so much to dig into but uh we'll start off where are you from so I um well I live in England I live uh, near South Wales um but we did kind of cover it I'm originally from San Jose California um that's where I was born um and my entire family is um from the US um my mum's from Brooklyn and my dad's from Seattle I did not uh, but I grew up here so I sound like Jose <laughs> so at, so at what age did you end up going to England 8 weeks old uh yeah 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 so but my entire family okay, what, still what, sounds what took what took your parents to to wales uh my dad's yeah. job so they were supposed to stay for two years and then 37 years later they're still here are, are they citizens yet yeah 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 and are you all, Just. are they dual citizens yeah we all are yeah oh, nice. well, what was that process like um i was probably about 15 before that happened so we were here for 15 years before that happened um i'm not sure what the process is like now um and we were nationals for a very very long time um but yeah and then yeah now we just have to fly kind of one way on one passport and one way on the other and that's about it really <laughs> and so what what's your dad do for work can you talk about it or um, it well <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah so he was he's retired now but he was electronics engineer Oh, I thought you were going to say you uh, have to take my friend from it. <laughs> <laughs> right. So, uh, and then he decided like, or they decided that they would just retire and stay um, in the UK. Yeah. Yeah. They just love it. They love it. And then we stayed here. So, yeah. That's so crazy. I've, I've never heard an American sound like this before. This is going to like, throw <laughs> <a little bit. laughs> I'm a little like uh whatever about it, but th that's crazy. Meg, how did you find the industry? Um, I really kind of accidentally fell into it. Um, I've listened to a lot of your podcasts and there's some, I love all the stories of like, I was 13 and, you know, I knew I've always wanted to do it. I really didn't. I, you know, at school here, especially, it's very much billed as if you can't do anything else, try hairdressing. Um, and it's very sad that it's billed like that and it should be billed like that, but that's what, well, that's the, you know, thing. So I, I was, 20 and I dropped out of university because I got pregnant with my high school sweetheart because that was a banging good idea um and I uh after I had my son I wanted a skill and I needed something I was a single parent and I wanted something that would work around my schedule and I live in the middle of nowhere and the only thing locally that they had to offer back then was hairdressing and I've, I'd always kind of messed around with my own hair and maybe my friends and I you know I enjoyed that and I thought well I'll give it a go and I found something I really really loved I found something that was kind of the perfect mix of science and art and it's it was something that worked around me as a mum and me as a human being and it worked with my brain and I just I and as I I've now been qualified 13 years and I, I love it more every year. Like I love it more. Okay. I want to get into a couple of things. One, were you, um, were you even in college and in high school and stuff? Were you, were you artistic? Did you, did you, did you have a, a flair for the arts? No. Well, was I was very much told I was not artistic. I was told, I was told, well, you're not very creative. Are you? You're not very artistic. I was always good at math. I was always, you know, I was always interested in the science and the whys, and I was always told, and I think because I didn't maybe fall into what they were selling as art, 
then I was labeled as not artistic, not creative, which, you know, when I say that to people now, they're like, that's insane. Because <laughs> I feel like I'm very, I'm a very creative person, maybe just not in the box that they were trying to shove me in. That's interesting, you know, because when I got in the industry, uh, somebody told me that too. They were like, you're terrible with your hands, you know, and, and like, and, and, and to be honest, I was like, wow, I got no other option. So we'll give this a go. Even if I'm terrible with my hands, I, you know, we'll give it a go, you know, and then here we are 30 some years later. Um, actually, now that you said that, like, it's, this is such a weird conversation. So when you were born, somebody told me that I was terrible with my hands, but you know, not 30 years <laughs> of my career, you know, I've made a career out of it, you know? Yeah. Um, so, you know, that's it. So, um, Oh crap. Where was I going with this? Art, 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 art. Anyways, what, whatever. So, um, so how did you, so there's still a challenge, right? Cause you're from like a small town. So there's a challenge to still build the, build a clientele. And also on that, like, I've never found that this industry is kind to, to single parents because the hours that are demanded are the hours in which, you know, our kids need us. Yeah. So I think how I accommodated myself as a single parent um, is how I accommodated myself as an autistic ADHD stylist. So I'm autistic ADHD, although I'm late diagnosed. I was diagnosed in my early 30s. Um, and basically, I have always worked by myself from qualifying. That's it. I have never, ever worked with someone for someone because I have never found an environment that was willing to even compromise and help and accommodate either my hours or my brain. Um, and up until um, October just gone, I I hid away in the industry. I didn't I didn't do anything on purpose. I had a private account on Instagram. I had I have a one to one salon. I work by myself for my clients. I have a full clientele that I don't take new clients. You know, that is, it is like my little box, my little safe space. And that's what I did for 13 years. So what changed in October? So I think it started changing this time last year. So this time last year, I, I follow the platinum giraffes, Sarai Spear. And, um, I, <laughs> and I followed her for a while. And I joined her Balanced Stylist Society. And she, I think she was doing an offer or something. And I was like, well, I can try it. I'll try it. I've never, I've, I'm pretty much self-taught because of the way my brain works. A lot of the education around here doesn't educate in a way that my brain can absorb. So, um, you know, self-teaching has been the best way, but I thought I'll try it. And I loved it. I loved the way she taught. I loved the community and then she had her retreat that she does every year and it was in Utah and I was like I can't go I was like that's insane I don't know anyone it's around fucking world like that is insane I can't go and I put it off and I put it off and I was like fuck it I'm gonna go and I decided like two weeks before I booked a flight I found a hotel I I messaged her and I said are there still tickets I want to come and and I went and I'm not exaggerating when I say it changed my life like I'm 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 not like I, I, and I don't want to get into it too much because I don't want to feel negative about it, but I, I don't feel like I've been treated well locally in my industry. And so I didn't believe kind people existed in the hair industry. I was a self-hating hairdresser. Like I was like, I do hair, but I'm not part of the hair industry. Like, I don't want to be part of it. Um, and so to, I went and I was completely myself, which is something I'm learning to do. And they were just so welcoming, like so incredibly welcoming. Just me being me, you know, I can talk a lot. I'm a hyperverbal autistic person, but then I shut down and I need time to just be by myself and not have people up my ass about that, you know, and not people judging me or putting words in my mouth and or rushing me. And they were just so incredibly open and kind. I mean, that's it. It was so kind. And it's just why I got my giraffe tattoo because I think I would have just died in my salon by myself. <laughs> honor. What an honor. Mm -hmm. I'm kidding. Have you met anybody else 
that struggled with the same thing that you're some some of the things that you struggle with in the industry? Hundred percent, yeah. And the more I talk about it, the more people I find. And so I and I wouldn't have started talking about it if it hadn't have been for Utah and for Sarai and for all the other people, you know, pin up Jordan and Misty Jane and um uh rubbish with names, uh uh Tabitha, the collective stylist, um, you know, it's so many people um, really, they opened my heart. Like, they they made me not afraid to stick my head above the parapet. And, and they invited me in and she asked me to be part of the BSS educators, which I didn't even think someone would care about how I teach because I can only teach the way I learn because of my brain. You know, and just being involved with all of that, and and then yeah, meeting people like Misty, and then Misty wanted caring about what I had to say, and and yeah, I get I have lots of people that reach out um, across the world that say, oh my god, I feel like that. I thought I was the only one that felt like that, and and that for me is kind of the direction I want to go. Like I, I figure the more I just say all the stuff I struggle with other people that struggle will realize they're not alone and they won't want to lock themselves in a box. You become that safe space. That's beautiful. Yeah. That is beautiful. Thanks for sharing, by the way. How does, how does, to back up a little bit, because I, I really want to bring value to anybody that may be listening. Like, like how does your brain receive, with, with, with the standard, so the standard way in which we're teaching, what is what, did you, what, what challenges have you had but most importantly, with those challenges, what have you done to kind of um, overcome or to manipulate those so you understand? So I think in the industry specifically, I mean, this obviously goes kind of everywhere where we're learning everything, is that the way we're socialized and the way we teach kind of sit hand in hand. And because we are in a female dominated industry, a, a lot of like how we're socialized to be kind of the Brits more so, I will say, this passive aggressive, like you can't be direct. You have to only be a certain amount of direct because that's rude. Like, and you can, you can ask questions, but don't ask too many questions because then that seems like you're questioning. Whereas, so my brain, one is very literal, like super literal. So if you say A, B, and C, I'm going to hear A, B, and C. I'm not going to assume that the rest of the alphabet comes after that. I'm going to stop at C, that's it. So if I ask, is, is there the rest of the alphabet? I need you to then spend the time, which it's more time and it's more brain energy for you to relay how many letters afterwards you are going to need me to, you know, know that's coming. But often when I ask why, I get told, well, you should just know. That, that's just obvious, isn't it? You know, and or I'm told that I'm 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 that I have subtext to what I'm saying so that by me asking why, I must be questioning their authority. I must be being a smart ass because everyone must know that no one could be that fucking stupid that they have to ask that question. Whereas I'm like, I just need clarifying. I need, everything needs it. Whatever anyone thinks is clarity, I need a little bit more. <laughs> and and it, and it, and I just it butt heads and and I can't always control my tone. So then I get told that the way I'm saying things sounds rude. Even though when I go back and I go, I'm really sorry, that's not how I meant it. They'll go, well, it obviously is. Wow. And then I, I, ca I can't do anything with that. Like, what am I supposed to do with that? And then it just makes me shut down. And I think it makes a lot of people shut down. And we just go, okay, we'll either run away or snap back and lose our shit <laughs> or pretend we understand. And, and that's not real learning. No, unfortunately... I think a lot of times educators or people in authority position are maybe they're insecure and they, you know, when, when they feel like they're being challenged or they're being questioned, their insecurities come and then they have to dominate the person to put, try to put them back into their place without, I think it's really uh, some of us, you know, or some of the educators, they are, they just don't have the patience or the, 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 just the love to just, to just trying to figure out what you're, where you're coming from or what you're trying to say. 
and and you know it, it i think we're all guilty to some point uh in in that yeah, I mean, for sure. I mean, like you don't, and 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 um, Meg, I, I'll challenge you a little bit. Like, I, I would imagine that if if I was teaching you, sometimes it can feel like when your three year old's going, "But why, mommy? But why, mommy? But why, mommy? Oh, 100%. But why, mommy? But why? and then you're like, 100%. because you know. So I also I, because. I, I, because, because exactly and that's where we get our parents famous line which is because i said so yeah <laughs> you know, and, that, and that but to your point that kind of becomes the default because i said so and 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 there's yeah. not necessarily oh this is gonna be terrible especially talking about parenting but there's not necessarily that love that's given that but also if it's not your child you're even less patient for that right you're even less patient uh for for that so so yeah that's that that that's challenging Do, but now that you have a diagnosis, do you also do you also feel some responsibility for yourself? It's like, well, this is the way that I learned, so I now need to present myself to be to 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 learn this way. Does that make sense? I don't even know if that makes sense. So, so I, since you've been diagnosed, is it is it easier now because you kind of like you 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 have something that you can work off of as opposed to just confusion? So it's 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 easier in the sense that I now have more not all of it but more correct language to explain what I'm struggling with whereas I grew up with just knowing the word why like I, I didn't have any other language so I was a three-year-old like that that I still have a very little kid in me that was never allowed to grow up so that there is the in autistic me never learned any coping mechanisms other than why 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 because Instead, I, I am getting better at saying, can you explain that in a different way? You know, I'm, I'm learning different ways to ask why without sounding like I'm being a twat about it, you know, like I'm being difficult, you know, but at the same time, you know, being who I am is a disability. So it, just because it's an invisible disability doesn't mean I don't deserve accommodations, like reasonable accommodations when they're available. And reasonable accommodations would be say, if I said, listen, I'm autistic, I'm, I'm really, I'm taking you very literally, I need to just ask these few questions. I ask those questions. And then if you don't know, I am okay with an I don't know. Like I will totally accept and I don't know because I love research, man. Like Google's my favorite thing ever. So, but like, don't feed me bullshit and pretend it's the three course meal. Like don't, or don't tell me it's my fault for asking why. Or like, well, you don't need to know why. I'm like, well, but, but I'm telling you, I need to know why, you, you know. You know it's what you need uh, um, in order to, to, to better serve yourself and, and others that are like you to, to help change the system because it, you know, maybe someone who, who is teaching and, and they don't know how to, to teach the way that you learn is, is there, do you understand to the way you learn and you can create and help educate to, 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 to help in that area? So that's what I want to do. That is what I want to do. I would like to, uh, and I'm, I'm trying to put something together, but I mean, this is like, how long is a piece of string? I've never done anything like this before. I'm trying to collect information from neurodivergent people, because listen, if we listen to neurodivergent people, they will tell us, we will tell you how to help us. And you listen, you know, I don't speak for all autistic people or all neurodivergent people. Like, you know, you meet one autistic person, you have in fact met one autistic person, but, you know, the accommodations are there. And I would love to put together something that salons or other places within the industry can implement to help their stylists, to help their clients, because I know there is a massive amount of neurodivergent stylists in this industry. Like it is the perfect combination of science and art. So a lot of neurodivergent people, and I don't know your understanding of neurodivergence, so I don't want to sound condescending, but if you, you know, like, let me know if you 
Want any help? Explain it. Hey, hey, Meg, I give you permission to be condescending. Yeah. Carry on. Okay. So, so I'll back up just a little bit because it will give you kind of a frame of reference. So, like, um, a neuro, the term neurodivergent is fairly new in the history of words. It came about in kind of the 1990s. So, and it's an umbrella term for like a, a brains that work in a slightly different way. Um, and you would have neurodivergent and then neurotypical. So, neurotypical would be I don't want to say normal because that's not what I mean, but others that working in a different type of way, but not our different. So what falls under a neurodivergent umbrella, and this isn't an exhaustive list, but it will give you a good idea, is anyone who is um, autistic, ADHD, um, dyslexic, dyspraxic, dys, um, has dyscalculia, um, has epilepsy, has Tourette's, um, OCD, fetal alcohol syndrome, and trauma can also present as a neurodivergence. So all of those things can have very similar um, kind of symptoms. Um, and they and generally, if you are one of those on that spectrum, you have a few of those. <laughs> um, and it, it's the way we absorb and communicate information. So a lot of the things that people with autism do or have people with ADHD do and have, or OCD do, and like there's a lot of lap over. Um, and in that, I uh, lost my train of thought, see my ADHD kicking in. That's absolutely, like off on a tangent and right back to you. Well, well, let me, well, let me, I, I'm, I'm gonna kind of bring you back a little bit and, and I'm just looking for Good. understanding here. I'm not pointing fingers, let me be clear. Yeah, yeah. But, but, um, but you know, you named off like ten or different ten, at least ten different d neurodivergence, and you know, you open it up by saying, you know, if you've met one autistic person, you've met one autistic person, right? Which which is fair. Yeah. I mean, I, you know, I think yeah. it's fair across the board. If you've met one person, you've met one person. However, yeah. how do you like? How do you standardize uh, understanding if everybody has different learning um, styles? If everybody has different learning systems, like how do you standardize? you know, the understanding for, you know, different, different learning styles and different learning understandings? So I think it's because I'm not trying to standardize it. So what I would but, like- but, but, Hold on, hold on, let me, I, I, just, just so we- Yeah. But what are we looking for? Like, like if I'm an educator and, and I want to do well by you, I want to do well by yeah. those 10 people, like as an educator, how much- I don't want to use the word responsibility because it has a negative connotation, but how much responsibility, yeah. I'm going to use it for the lack of another one, but yeah. you know, how much responsibility do I have to know every single person in, in, in the world's like learning style? So I would say more, instead of thinking about having to teach, like every single person needs to learn because that is unrealistic. Like I'm, you know, it's just like, I can't teach like every single person needs to learn, but for the, say you've got, a group of people in front of you or a small group of people in front of you that's more because what i'm thinking of is more you know in a salon environment if you've got say 10 stylists right so that's a fairly small group right and they're your people is to treat them as all as individuals is to ask them as to not try and standardize them not expect that that this is the way i want to present the information Therefore, they all have to be able to absorb it at, in this same way is to ask them and say, OK, what is happening here with you is something are you understanding it? And then being able to be more flexible in your teaching style. And the only reason I have I mean, I'm not a teacher, but the only reason I have kind of. Vague experience in this is because. For the last two years, I've been home educating our youngest, who is autistic ADHD, and I have had to learn, I've had to get out of my ego, and I have had to learn that it is about her, and if she doesn't get it, it's because I'm not teaching it in the way that she gets it, it's not her fault, it's because I need to rephrase it, or I need to come at it from a different angle, and, and it does work, and I'm, and it isn't that much more work, like actual work, but it's hard. It's hard to unlearn. Mm. But if I'm just going to play devil's advocate, yeah. If if I only know how to cut from A to B, a straight line from A to B, that's all I know how to do. And and everybody's intrigued about how I cut from A to B. I can only teach you 
how do I cut from A to B? Because I don't maybe I don't know other ways to teach you how to get from A to B. I just know how to cut a straight line to A A to B. Not everybody might get that, or not everybody, as far as an educator, know how to change or show you a different way to get to that straight instead of a straight line, a curved line. I don't know if I'm making any sense. <laughs> yeah. So, so how are you? So I've got a question for your question. <laughs> how are you presenting that information? So like, so say you're still presenting the same information, but how are you presenting it? Are you showing them physically? Are you talking it through at the same time? Are you giving them chances to ask questions? Are you, you know, like, are you, it, is it interactive or is it just, it's it's more the way the information is presented rather than the content of the information, if that makes sense. Yeah, totally. And, yeah, and I would say that's where it's, it's, I get, I totally get how big it feels. And, and I'm not, I'm not trying to reinvent the wheel. I don't want, and I don't want salons and people in power or whatever. I don't want them, I don't want to get their back up. I don't want to make them feel like they're all shit and they're doing it wrong because for years I thought that no one just gave a fuck about us, right? What I've learned is that people just don't know. But I also, there are so many like tangible things that they can change that don't take a lot of time, don't take a lot of effort, don't take a lot of money. And are those kind of little tricks and tips that you go oh actually or you'll go oh actually i already do that i, I, like, I think you'll you, probably do a bunch of things that you already you don't realize that you do that you already do yeah i i think you hit the nail on the head when you said you know just just allow the individuals to ask the question they want to know what you know right they're not trying to get you to reinvent that they just want to know what you know and you just might have to allow space and time to explain it in a different way I, I, I yeah. love that. I love that explanation. Yeah, I mean, even to, even to kind of like simplify it a little bit more, I don't know. Actually, let me not let me not open up with that because I might just make it more confusing. But but you know, like like um like we've taken like you know through some brands and stuff, we've taken some education and and you know they they talk about like audio learners, visual learners, and then hands on mm -hmm. learners. You know, so so I mean, I, I I would I would guess, and I'm not trying to like put words in your mouth, certainly, but I would guess that if you followed those rules, that that you have a better, even if you're neurodivergent, you would have a better way of understanding. Potentially, so the the audio visual um, thing is a very, very simplified version. Right. But yeah, so I mean, everyone is, obviously, we're all different. And it, within neurodivergence, we're all different in how we learn. So how I learn best is I like watching first. So I am a, an observer. So I like to sit back and watch, which is why I binged like a shit turn of your podcast. <laughs> I like Thank to you. watch and know what I'm getting myself into. And I knew the questions. I, I got the vibe on the two questions you were going to ask before you even told me, you know. So I like to observe first, so that I like to watch first. Then I like to give it a go. Then I like to, if I'm reading information, I also have to have it out loud. So I can't just read information. So I either have to speak it as I read it, or I need it like audiobook or anything like that. So I need a combo basically of all of them together. So I, from my experience with most of the neurodivergent people I know is that it is a combo situation. So it is a mix and match and give people choice. As you say, if you can have, uh, even if, you know, the same information, do your straight cut and your same information, but say to someone, okay, what format would this be most helpful in? Because most of the time you can do most things, unless it's like online education, you can't do as much hands-on. Like, but they could do hands-on if they wanted to, you know, you could give them like, you know, say, oh, go away and do this or try this. You know, it's give them that option, that choice, make them feel heard and they will absorb it better. Yeah, we all learn differently. Like, like I, I'm like, you. Yeah, I, I, I like to watch and then I can learn audible, audibly as well while I'm watching. But if it's just strictly audible, like oh, yeah, no. I'm, I'm absorbing and all of a sudden I'm thinking about something else. My mind mm -hmm. wandered off and, and then I come back and like, oh man, I got to rewind that. Yeah. And I'll yeah. rewind the same thing a thousand times. Well, mm -hmm. yeah. interesting you bring that up. Like I'm a very good audio learner. Like 
I'm a fucking genius audio learning, you know, but if, but for me to read the same thing, like I'll, I'll go back and go, oh man, I just, I was, you know, I was reading words and not sentences and reading words and not paragraphs, you know, and then I have to go back and I go, oh my gosh, I'm like 12 pages back and I don't understand anything that's in here, <laughs> you know? So then I got to start over and then it becomes work and then I get discouraged and then I'm like, I'm not doing yeah. it. I always yeah. admired people that can just, oh yeah, I'll just sit down and I'll, I'll go through two books, three books a, a week while I'm at, on vacation. No effing way. No, I'm like no a, no a chapter. Yeah, exactly. Like, like I'm a big audio book and, and understand it. And right? understand it exactly. <laughs> you know, it's and and like when people, I I admire people that, and maybe this is you guys. I don't know, but I admire people that can read at bed. I can't read at bedtime. I'm no. done. Oh, oh yeah, I'm like half sitting. No. I'm like, yeah, exactly. Yeah. No. I, I no. wonder if it's an industry. It must be an industry thing because it seems like all my clients read. I know. <laughs> You know, so, so like, oh my god! It's Thanks so, for uh, bringing my uh, my uh, neuro neurodivergence. <laughs> yeah, now I, I I get it. I yeah, get it. <laughs> I get it. But you know, Meg, I think I think you know to the overall point. I think, and 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 Robert Cromings has a great line about it. You know, he says that we're the industry of misfits, and I think that there's some truth to that. And and I think that I think there's a lot of people. There's a lot of people in this space that that have some sort of neurodivergence or you know have some kind of learning disability of 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 any sense. Um, I, I think I think that you know, like you like you opened up like let's try hairdressing. I, th I think that that's a lot of people's experience. I, I certainly know that that's my experience. And, and a lot of people that we've talked to, yes, some of them grew up in hair salon, some of them knew at 13, but the majority of people that we talk to, you know, even that we don't record. Um, yeah. We do talk to people that we don't record. Hey, if you can figure <laughs> it out. I mean, I think you're going to, you're going to be loved globally. Yeah. If you can figure out how to, to tap into, to a new way of, of just being uh, a listener so we can teach, uh, I, I and think not, not even a new way, but just an understanding of it. Yeah. I think you'll be loved across the globe. Yeah, for sure. I would just like to not be hated in my back garden. That'd be great. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, okay. Are you ready for this, Meg? Here's the biggest truth of the truth is that, um, is that the people you touch are the hardest people to reach. You know, yeah. it's been true with the podcast, like, like, like it, it's been true in like everything and with everything that, that we've done, the people that are closest to you, both geographically and like, and even your family members at times, they're, they're, the, they're the hardest ones to reach, you know? So, yeah. so don't look in your back garden to change the world. Look in Utah. I, yeah. And uh, yeah, I was just in Tennessee and, and my passport's getting a, a load of views. Holy crap. So yeah. Well, if you uh, 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 if you're available April thirteenth and you want to fly in, we'll have a ticket available for you for press. So legitimately, when I was totally gonna, and I'm in Spain. Check me out, I'm like everywhere. Wow. I will. I will be next year. All next right. year, you you should definitely be there next year because uh, no, you know, we 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 have some uh, well, whatever. I don't want to get into next year. We'll see. <laughs> no, no, no. Actually, I would love to have her speak for five minutes about this um by next year you should have yeah if you can put together a five minute presentation on 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 just what it is and how we learn or i i think uh it would be you know we would love to have you come yeah. and speak to our community dude you're gonna really struggle making me only speak for five minutes i don't think i've only said anything 10 minutes you know we'll give you 10 <laughs> Oh, why say in ten words what you can say in five? I'm like, why say in ten words what you can say in four thousand and five? Like, why? Why are we only using five words? The we're giving you a whole year. No, we're, we're giving you a whole year to prepare exactly. And 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 and, and Meg, I said I. I suggest that you listen to Michael Cole a lot because Michael Cole can uh Michael Cole can do a paragraph in two words, you know. He he's okay. at like yeah. just like getting to the point, you know, he does it with like uh, practice. He, no. he's brilliant. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely absolutely. Okay. Okay, 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 okay. I've been waiting for my bust your balls about this, Meg. So here we go. Are you ready? So uh Okay. Oh yeah, you know, do it. You did a post yeah, yep, yeah, you did a post about us um when when we first started to chat. 
and um, we had we had just released our 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 state of the industry podcast with Gordon Miller, and you did a post about about vivid colors and and I, to give you some clarity and just so we all just so we are all understanding, which by the way I'm not mad at you, I think it's very cool, um, but um, but but you you it felt like you were a little offended for our our, our conversation about vivid hair and and just just for a little clarity there like. When we talk to Gordon, it's about the state of the entire industry. So where is money being spent? Where is money being being brought in at? So there's absolutely positively, and a lot of them are our friends, and a lot of them you you know are making a great living out of Vivid's hair. But as a, as an industry overall, for the you know for the fifty million hairdressers that are that are in the world, it's still a small percentage of, of what the of what the industry is overall. So, anyways, I just wanted to like put some clarity there. I feel like my ego's attached to it, and it's really not. But you know, there's that. All right, you're up, Meg. No, so I so you got a taste then of how I can sound maybe aggressive, and that's just the autism because I like to have a debate. No, I. I no, I found it interesting because it shows how when your environment doesn't include something, you can think it doesn't exist. And I think that goes for neurodivergent people. I like to make connections with things. And for me, you know, I recently I realized that I went from kind of maybe 20% vivid clients and now I probably have 80% vivid clients and I am the smallest oh. fucking town ever. Yeah. Like there's like, there's probably like, well, there's like 8,000 people and they're all, yeah. Just watch Hot Fuzz. If anyone knows Hot Fuzz, watch it. That's where I'm from. I'm from a little town in Gloucestershire. So like you, you wouldn't think necessarily that would be a thing, right? But it's my, it's my world. Like that's, you know, everyone has it, does it, loves it. So it shows that when it's, it's not all around you all the time. It can seem like it's not there. And I found it was interesting when Gordon was saying that uh, what well, only two his bank assistants or whatever, they they only they're the only people he knows that has vivid air and they do it themselves. And I'm like, it it's interesting because I think a lot of people at the minute are going, Oh, well, everyone's autistic ADHD. Well, everyone's just autistic. No, I didn't no one was autistic before, whatever. And I'm like, right. So like Mount Everest, you know, was discovered in like 1858. It existed before then, right? Just because we didn't know about it. And I feel like that was what I kind of got from it. I found it interesting that I didn't, I didn't believe that there was someone like him that could think that no one got vivid hair. Like that's what kind of blew my mind. And, and, and I find that interesting because people are interesting to me because I generally don't understand them. Um, <laughs> So like the psychology of how people think and why people think how they do, um, I found that interesting. And I liked that you were able to have that conversation when I know you are both in the industry and and be able to have that and then have all these vivid hair specialists on your podcast and have other conversations. I love that. I love a debate that is a debate and isn't an argument. Even if I sound like I'm argumentative, I'm not. <laughs> those that are listening to the podcast, you got to go to Spotify, YouTube and watch it. Because she has incredible vivid hair right now. She's, I mean, your hair is spot on. Thank you. I did it myself. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's awesome. Yeah, that was that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's good. All right, my ego's gone now. I don't, I don't have. <laughs> I don't have any ego against you, Meg. I mean, doom, doom. she did quote me directly in it, but you know, whatever, whatever. Right. <laughs> no, no, it's all it's it's all good. No, no, you know what? I I I love that we have this format, and 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 a lot like you, like I mean, we've done it on this podcast. Like we play devil's advocate a lot of times, just for better understanding. You know, it's just for better understanding, and not just for us, but for for any of our listeners. Like, what would like? I kind of think like, what would our list? I don't physically think this, but I think if I'm thinking about it, other people are thinking about it. So, so let, let let's try to make it like a broad conversation or a conversation that can reach other people. Because if you know, if, if if you can't reach anyone, you don't reach anyone, right? Yeah, I, I'm all for that. So I I've always said that, and some of this is a bit of an autistic trait, but like I am like painfully sometimes impartial like I will you know my best friend if she if she's being a twat about something I will tell her mm -hmm. like and if someone I really dislike does something amazing I will praise them like it, I'm you know I 
yeah, I want to see all the sides. I want to see all the sides to everything all of the time. And that can be really why, why, why. But I like me and I like other people like me. So I like you. I like you too. That can, yeah. be, little, that, that can be a little like um, daunting, can it? But, but just, to what about what? Just, to, just to understand ju just to understand things from all sides you know like to have a true like interest in it or is it just so much a part of you that it's not daunting maybe it's more so daunting I actually, than though i yeah so i actually saw a tiktok today about it and it was an autistic guy and he was saying that when people tell autistic people to like not go so deep like mm, just it, don't it's not that deep don't worry about it it's literally asking us not to be autistic because like our brain has to know the why. I have to know the whole of everything. And I'm not, it's not daunting so much as exhausting. Like sometimes I wish I could turn my brain off, like it doesn't turn off even when I'm sleeping. But I, my brain is interested. I wanna know the why of everything I do, everything everyone else does all of the time. Um, and it, I think it helps me be a better me. And I think it helps me understand and it makes me, who I am, but it is, yeah, it is part of how my brain works for sure. I'm intrigued. I'm intrigued too. Miss Meg, I, I just, I, I, I adore you. I, uh, I think you're, I think you're amazing. I think, I think what you're tracking here is really, um, really important. Yeah. I think know? the industry needs you. I, I do too. I think your, your mission is, is spot on. Yeah. I think we need oh, to you're gonna make me cry. <laughs> Wait a sec. Are autistic people allowed to cry? No, we have no feelings, <laughs> apparently. <laughs> but at the same time, we are too sensitive. <laughs> yeah. Well, well, yeah. To to Tony's point, and 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 again, I'm gonna I'm gonna shout out Sarai because um, because I think the most important thing that 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 Sarai has done with you and continues to do and has always done is that she brings people out of their shell. And I think that we need more people out of the shell because I think, I think, I think we're in a shell for a reason. And I think if we can start to break through those shells and, and, and people to come out of their shells, th th there's a lot more learning um, as an industry and, and as a world than that. So, you know, big shout out to Sarai. Our, it's our, the platinum, our, our giraffe. platinum giraffe. Yep. yep. The if platinum. Those that are, that are, that are not following her, follow her. Yeah. Yeah. For sure. Yeah, I mean, I personally want to say a huge thank you to Sarai. Like, to, from a year ago not knowing her to now her being one of my closest friends, like, friends. Like, she she absolutely changes my life on a regular basis. She is genuinely one of the kindest humans I've ever met. And just, I can be so honest with her. I can be all of my autistic self. And she never once makes me feel bad for being me, like, and that's so rare in any industry, let alone this one. Mm, well, and in your mission and, and anything that we can do to support what you're trying to do, um, don't hesitate to ask. You, I mean, you've been on here once and like your family now. So anytime that you need uh, our audience to, to share and spread what you're learning and what you're doing. Uh, yeah, definitely reach out. And, and well, um, and, and like Tony said, like, um, We'd love to have you come next year, you know, whether that's, you know, to, to, to speak on a stage in front of people, which I think would be amazing. Or if, or if, you know, you just want to kind of hang out and um, you can do that too. Um, yeah. We uh, thank you, you know, thank And she has a blue passport, which is pretty cool. Right. She <laughs> fly in and out easy, you know, from the UK's anyway. And, and, and Misty's down, she's not too far away from here. So uh, it, you know, you come, she comes, it'd be a nice little, little family reunion there. Oh, and I love Misty. Misty's lush. Yeah, she, and lush. That's a perfect word for her. She's just lush. Yeah. And by the way, she does the greatest lip sync ever. And if you haven't seen it, oh my god, I've seen it. Oh my god, it's my favorite thing I've ever seen on the internet ever. Mm. Her her like, lip sync. We got to judge it. <laughs> we we we, no. we were the judges for that. Yeah, yeah. We oh my judges. god, I she shared that because I, I I didn't know her back then. She shared it like a few months ago. Yeah. I want to see that side of her more. Like I need that Misty in my life more. Like wow. That was incredible. It was it was uh, so cool. Can, can we talk about that for a sec? So Tony and I now now a little bit of backstory. Like it it's it's Elizabeth is gonna kill me for this, but it was mainly women. There was like four guys in the, you know, there's there's 150 women and like four guys, you know. So uh, Elizabeth hates for me to call it a woman's retreat. She's like, it's not, but 
but <laughs> you know, it, it, it was 150 women in us, you know, so, yeah. you know, there's that. So we were asked to judge it and we didn't, when we first started to judge the lip sync contest at, at hair love is what I'm talking about is that we didn't know, like, like, can we be, can we be, funny can we be like like where's the board you know we don't want to offend anybody that's not what we want to do at all you know but if we can be funny we want to be funny so they set us up as like it, it was three of us me you and jerry so it was three of us three guys on one side and three girls on the other side and this was the judge right and then uh it was very much like american idol or or any of those 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 shows so we kind of we started off and we were kind of being nice and polite and stuff and the girls across the thing from us were, were like annihilating everyone. And I was like, they were the Simon cows. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so then we were like, hold on. Okay, this is different. So then we could start being funny. We were never disrespectful, I hope. I mean, that was not our intent. <laughs> but certainly we could be we could be funny about it. You know what I mean? And and it it, it was honestly like the highlight of that year. It was 2021, and that's when Misty did it, and that's when it was so awesome. It was such a cool, cool event. Like, I I, I wish we could judge more of those because that was just so much fun. Right. Anyway, I don't know why we went there. Meg, thank you for hanging out with us. Thank you for sharing your story. Thank you. Mostly thank you for being vulnerable and and, and sitting in with us, and and just, you know, thank you for joining us. How can, um, if people want to follow you, see you, whatever, how can they find you? So, I mean, at the minute, I'm literally just on Instagram at Colouring on the Spectrum. Uh, my website is coming soon. I am working on that. But yeah, Instagram, Colouring on the Spectrum. That's awesome. Awesome. Can they reach out to you if they have questions, more questions, or if they... All of the time, any of the times. I'm used to all the time zones, so yes. <laughs> I'm glad you're used to all the time zones because they still confuse me. I'm really, next, <laughs> next time I'm in bed reading the book, I fall asleep, I'll wake up with a text and hey, it just happened again. <laughs> <laughs> sure. Meg, you, Meg, thank you so much for the work that you're doing for the industry and for the people in the industry. Um, yeah. You know, we, we appreciate you. We appreciate you putting yourself out for that because I, I know that that can be, I'll use the word daunting again. I know that that can be daunting, but thank you so much. Um, thank you for for your passion for the industry and thank you very, very much for joining us on your day off. <laughs>